Good morning, Rabbi Sai. Ah! Lili Nishmasi Mimi Rossi Rusmas Marlachai. The cameraman is wondering why I'm saying good morning at uh, 9.30 at night. Okay. We're going to start. We're back in the hotel in Mandalayan. Thank you for coming out here. Yosef Rosenzweiger Manchester says, Dear Rebelli, wow, what a double siat de a couple of pictures taken in a Morocco museum. I'm on a Pesach program in Morocco, debating whether I should go to the hotel trip. And at the end I did. With my chavruz, so back in Manchester, we were learning Hilchah Shabbos and trying to understand the practical side of coming, combing the cotton. And that was the sugi yesterday, combing the cotton, making strings out of it. Baruch Hashem, here it is, two birds with one stone. I hope this comes in use. Good morning, shkoyach. Why Rosenberg, Manchester? So I took one of the many pictures. This is the loom. This would have been great for Shabbos. I would have loved actually to see, you know, as a child, you're bored to see this kind of thing. But when you learn it in the, in, in Masech Shabbos and it comes throughout Shabbos, the loom, etc., it's very, very Gishmaki stuff. Oh, now I see that reed on the bottom, the piece of wood that goes in between. You're the stuff. Okay. Over here, Benji Gankro, something like that. Today I walked by this committed MDY follower listening intently in the Parsippany Sheraton. And earlier I saw people with MDY sweatshirts. Ari Gankro, Mechutim with Avigdor and Zezi Fold, Sister Shkoyach. Shkoyach. David Pinchas Bergowitz, I just started watching you share. I watched Yvom Mazdaf, Beis and Gimel and then Lamed Tess. What you said about the spit needing to be visible happened with my grandmother. They made her do it a number of times until they were satisfied. She was pretty frustrated. My grandmother was Niftara three weeks ago. I'm saying the Nisham should have an aliyah. Below is a link to an article from when she did Chalitza and attached are some horrible quality videos and some pictures. So here, Rabbi Yisai, for the very first time, we have some pictures of an actual Chalitza. Here is his grandmother. The room is full of people. And I put a narrow here to show the Chalitza shoe. And Yaakov Ayal, he created this exact shoe for MDY, Bezer Hashem. I will have it when I get back there to Israel. Here you can see the three Dayan, I'm sitting on the chairs, but there's many, many people in the crowd. And here she is. I didn't realize that you literally have to get on your knees. And this guy looks uninterested. He is reading some of the stuff he has to say, V'chulu. But like I said, it's possible that she was married for or maybe it was a second marriage, and her husband never had children. Whatever the story is, she had to do chalitza at a, at a later stage in life. Today, sponsored for the Koyal, the Koyal Choydash, is sponsored anonymous in Schos of Hilben, Sordino, and Rivko Bas Fegel, they should be zoichot to Zerusha Kayama. Paris HaChoydash, Bressler, Austin Rosenberg, Shulman, and Tobias families in Schos, for which name of her, she arrived in Shomer, David, Ben Yochev, Druk Shlita. Paras HaChoydish, by the Lakin Lovig family in Lakewood, New Jersey, because Toira is the best of Segula. Paras HaChoydish, Chodish Nisan, sponsored by Yoeli. Lina Shmiz, Dov Pinchas, Ben Moisha, Allah Shalom. Lina Shmiz, Chom HaChai, Rufruma, Baz, Dov Pinchas, Allah Shalom. Lina Shmiz, Sichil, Shraga, Ben, Abraham Levi, Allah Shalom. Paras HaChoydish, Aaron Frame, Lizchus, Parnos, and Siyat Shemayin, continue that slocha to myself. Paras HaChoydish, Aaron, that slocha to the Magid Shir, video editor, that slocha in continuation, not missing a shir. And Lila Zechen Nishmas Rav Avrom Yitzchok Ben Binyamin. In honor of Yosef Biliak, our in house editor, for making a seum on Shas Mishnayis. Wow. Big, big Mazel Tov. And in honor of Yossi Klein, as we saw before, spotted in the Jump Z in New York. That was yesterday's year, not, not, not an hour ago. Yossi Klein, Surah Salif Pill, the number one most Kishmakid. The goat of Gishmak. Aaron Walsh. Waltoch. Waltoch. Lili Nishmas. Nriva Bas. Avram Shraga Faival. Olea Shalom. Honor on your side. And as the Gittel Bas Riva for Rafu Shlema. I don't know if I pronounced the first name correctly, but that's what it says here. Vladislav Zakharov Rafu Shlema for myself. Yitzchok Ben Tamara. Okay. Rafu Shlema. Boy, Sai, here we go. We are holding three lines from the bottom of Daf Mem Dalad Omid Beis. And today is Daf Mem Hey. And if you're listening to this, when you're supposed to be listening to it, so it's probably like the fourth day of the Oimer, just a reminder for everybody to say, Sphere's Oimer. 
Omar Rabba Barachano, Omar Vichno. Hakol Moidim Be'eved Vo'eved Kechovim Habol Bas Yisrael Shavlad Mamzer. Rabbi said, this is a sugya that I believe is relevant today. I have a friend that this is relevant. His mother was violated by a non-Jew and he is here and alive and he learns in Shiva, etc. Is he a mamzer? Is he not a mamzer? That's today's sugya. The Gemara over here starts off saying, in the name of Rabbi Yechonon, It's not a far out thing, that's what I'm saying. It's relevant in our day and time. Eved and Oivit Kechavim, a non-Jew, Habal Bas Yisrael, who had relations with a Jew, Shavlad Mamzer. I learned the sugya, I started shuddering. I have a friend, I know him. But the end of the sugya is that the Vlad is not a Mamzer, the Vlad is kosher. Over here the Gemara says, everybody admits. Hakamoidim, what does it mean? Man hakamoidim, who is everybody? So luckily the Gemara says, not everybody, it's Shimon Timni. Famous Shimon Atimni from Mishnah and Daphim Tes. Even though Shimon Atimni says that there's no Mamzer when a Jew is over on a lav, Hanamili, Michayove, Lavim, the Tafsib Kedushin. That's when you're, you get married and the Kedushin is Chal, there is a good Kedushin. Since there's no Kiddushin at all, so Shimon Atimini would admit, Kichayov increases Dami, and the Vlad is a Mamzer. Why is the Kiddushin Achal? So there's a very long Rashi. I didn't have the chance to make the charts for it, but Rashi brings a number of Sukkim here, the famous Pasuk, by Eved, by Eliezer, Eved Avram, he's the slave of Avram. Teishvuka im hachamor, am hadoim el hachamor. It's a nation similar to a donkey. Avodim are like a donkey. They're not a nation. And then he brings the Pasuk, Vachar Kain Tavoy. That's by the other nations. Okay. Interesting stuff. It's a very interesting Rashi. If you have time, go through it. He goes into, and I'm not 100% why he, he ends off. Rashi says that even if a guy has intent for Kiddushin, there's no Kiddushin by guy. Why does he have to go into that? I'm not 100% sure. When you have Sukkim and everything else, why does he have to go into the logic behind it? Okay. Mesve. I have a question. You're telling me that if a guy has relations with a Jew, the child is a Mamzer, Mesve. This is our case. Havlad Mamzer. A Mamzer. A mamzer only exists if it's an erva, it's a rias. Your wife's sister, whatever it is, your daughter, a rias. Vanish karis and this is tremendous oinish. Now, that's pretty much what Shimon Atimni holds. That it has to be a karis, it has to be a rias. Nevertheless, he holds that, that a, a guy with a Jew is not a mamzer. Shimon Atimni also hold the same thing. Elo Omar Rabbi Yosef, Mana Kol Moedim Sa Shimon Atimni. Rabbi, the famous Rabbi, the author of the Mishnah, he's the one that holds that a child from this violation, or if they did it, if they had intent, whatever, kids a mamzer. Yeah, that means like Loyaleinu, a lot of these Israelis or whatever. There's a lot of intermarriage. Children are mamzer. Mamzer. They come back, they want to go on these, uh, you know, these birthright and this and that. No, you're a mamzer. Rebbe holds a mamzer. So it goes like this. Ooh, I gave away my picture for a second. Okay. Give Valdi a picture. Hopefully you guys didn't see it. Okay, next. I think I might have a chart, but I'm scared to go through my pictures because you'll see my picture. What happened if a person does chalitza to one? Rashi brings the case. Oh, jumped. If a person does chalitza to one of the wives, and then 
he's a boy of the second one, you don't need a get, according to Rabbi Kiva. Rabbi Kiva considers, we had yesterday and yesterday's share, or an hour ago's share, chalutza, base, chalutza now, is considered like your wife. So, your wife's sister, if you try to marry your wife's sister, no condition at all, zero. You don't have to go give her a divorce. But Rebbe himself doesn't hold it. However, Rebbe, Rebbe Udanasi, the author of the Mishnah, he holds that if a guy violates a Jew or has a relation with a Jew, the child is a mamzer. How do I know this? The of Dimi Omar Rav Yitzchak Bar Dumi Mishum Rabbeinu. He said in the name of Rabbeinu. Who's Rabbeinu? Rebbe. Oy vegachavim vevera ba bas Yisrael avlad mamzer. Great. According to Rebbe, Hakol Moidim. Who's Hakol Moidim? Who's everybody? Rebbe. Rebacha Sar Habiro Rebbe Tamchum Breder Rav Chia Ish Kfar Akol Horukano Shav Yosa. Sad story. In those days, it was very common for whoever it is, to capture people and demand ransom, like today in Mexico. Happens every day, right? I think the, I spoke to people from Mexico, they told me they don't know anybody that hasn't been infected by it. Like every family has once, has been kidnapped at least once. That's what he told me. So, they, they had, they were captives, these women. There's another gear here that was in Tika, that was in Chutzlart. I don't know if everybody knows this, but it, it seems like there was a, a time and period of time where piracy was legal. You just paid taxes to the government, whatever. They wanted to like stop trades between different countries. They said piracy is legal. You grab anybody you want, you grab a couple of women, you demand money. So, so happens that they had her do pidyon shvuim, that had to redeem the shvuim. Have a chod the abram mavid kechavim. And they notice, what's going on? Everything good? Okay. They noticed that one of the women is pregnant. Loyalainu. Unfortunately, a Jewish woman pregnant from one of the kidnappers. Says the Gemara, Now what's the, what's the halacha? She's going to have a child. What do we do with this child? Is he a mamzer or not a mamzer? Have a chadid abir mavi chavim. Vazda kamei. You tell me if you need to stop for a second, we'll stop. Okay. Have a chadid abir mavi chavim. Vazda kamei. The Rebbe Ami. Abalu. Rebbe Ami says. Rebbe Yochanan. Rebbe Lazar. Rebbe Chanino. The Amri. We have three. Who? Rebbe Yochanan. Rebbe Lazar. Rebbe Chanino. They say. Oy vikachavim ve'eved al ba bas Yisrael. Our case. Have vlad mamzer. Unfortunately, I have bad news. Not only was this woman violated, and not only did she go through torturous months, who knows how long she was in captivity, but she's going to deliver a mamzer. Omer of Yosef, Revusa Lemech Shev Gabri. It's a big deal that you're dropping names like that, you're name dropping, and you just drop three names. That doesn't do anything. We don't pass in Allah based on the amount of names that you drop. Ha, Rav Ushmuel Bebavo. We have the two greats in Bavo, Rav and Shmuel. Rabbi Shua ben Levi, and we have Rabbi Shua ben Levi. Uber Kapara Ober Tisro. And we have Rishub and Levi back upon Ner Tisro. Bamilo, Khalufi Bakapar by Ali Zikni Dar. You know what? We don't we'll take out the word the, the name by Kapara, we'll put in all the elders of Dara, of the South. The Amri, and they say, When a guy has a relationship with a Jewish woman, Havlat Kosher, the child is kosher, kosher, not a mom's. So don't worry about it. You're gonna have a kosher child. El Omar Yosef Rebbe. I'll prove to you that it's Rebbe. Rebbe is the one that says it's a mamzer. Valdek. You know, you should remind me, Shlomo, from now on, I should just drink hot water, not cold. Soothe that throat. The chiyasar of dimi omar rabbi yitzchok bar abdumi b'shum rabbeinu amru. By the way, the reason why I'm giving two shirim today is because we have to do an extra shir for Yantif because of Eretz Yisrael and everything. We need that extra shir. Now, I was supposed to give it tomorrow, but my good friend Shlomo Lazarin, who joined us here in the hotel for Yantif, he convinced me to do it today so that I could spend quality time with my family. He didn't convince, he forced me. I mean, he, 
he wouldn't leave me alone for hours. So I said, okay. But it was a nace. Nace. Because these dafim, these two dafim that I prepared today are easier. Yivam is dafim. And I mean, the other, the tomorrow's dafim is also easy. So maybe it wasn't the greatest nace. But I'm, I'm not going to tell him for forcing me. Not that I'm not going to give a shir tomorrow. I'm giving a shir tomorrow. I'm giving a shir, tomorrow. I'm giving a shir Arab Yantav as well. But I'm not, I'm not giving two shirim tomorrow. So here we go, in the name of Rabbeinu, and again, once again, in the name of Rabbi, this is just repetitive stuff, nothing, no big chidushim here. In the name of Rabbi, it's a mamzer. So now we have a new Lashon. It's a ruin. This child is ruined. It's not a mamzer, ruin. Meaning, no good to marry a certain community, nation. Laman, what does it mean, ruin? Can't marry Israel. Amr Rabbi Shua, Avlad Kasher. No, Rabbi Shua himself says that the Vlad is Kasher. Elo Likuna. It means that this child cannot marry in Tikuna. The Kula Amaroi, the Machshri. Moedish Avlad Pogum Lakula. Every Manda Omar who says that the, this child is Kasher will admit that this child from a guy is not good for a kind. Mikal Bachomer Malmona. We had Balmon calling God the Shani Surah Shalom Akal, right? We had it the other minute, the other day, sorry. Ooh. Yesterday we had in the Shir that Almona, the only one that she can marry is a Kain Gadol. Nevertheless, her son, her kid, her daughter cannot marry into the Kuna. Bina, by the way, Bina, as Rashi points out, and that's why I keep getting confused, because over here Rashi points out Bina does not mean her son, it means her daughter. Anamid Beis also. Once it did mean son, but okay. Bina Pogum. The daughter is no good. Now, what about the son? He He's not a Kayin. So, there's this thing as a boy marrying a, a Kayhanis. He himself is not a Kayin, so whatever. Fine. His father is not, not Jewish, right? So, he's not a Kayin. But the daughter cannot marry in the Kuna. Zu. This Evan, she surushava call. And it then she not pogum. This child that's from a relationship of a guy of an Evan, that this is to everybody. And it then she not pogum, certainly, since every woman cannot marry a guy. So if they do, the son, the, the kid, the daughter should become possible kuna, kavachimer from an almana. Almana who's not also to everybody, just to one person in the world. Her child from that union, from that marriage that's us, her, is becomes also the kuna. So certainly a woman who's also to all the goyim, the child should become pagan. Says Gemara Ma'ala Amana Kain Gadol Shekain He Atzim It's the same shirkh that we had the other shir on Daf Mem Dalit. What kind of kavachaymer is it? Almana is so strong her is her. She was over such a big Israel that she herself becomes puzzled. Says Gemara. Okay, but Chanami Kimin Shenivela, like we said at the end of yesterday's shir. But once she becomes nival to the guy, Psala, she herself becomes puzzled to Kahuna. This Yisraelis, let's say, that was nival to a guy, she becomes puzzled to, to, to Kain, just the same way as the Lamana becomes puzzled to Kain. Don't be able to rib Shimon. A guy who has relations with the Kain, Levi Yisraelis. She herself becomes puzzled to Kahuna, Shinemar. So let's look at the chart for a second. You see in the chart, it says, the guys in Zoom had a 20 minutes to look at this chart. I think Yosef goes ahead and he like blurs it out or whatever later on. I don't know why. Okay, fine. He holds it's better like this. What's the halacha? The halacha is that if a woman who is a Kayhanis. Her father is a Kayhan, she's a Kayhanis, and she marries a Yisrael. She cannot eat Truma any longer. But you go to the next Pasuk, Ubas Kayhan, Kisiya Almano Grusha. If she loses her husband, she becomes an Almana. Or she gets divorced, at the end of the Pasuk says, Melechem she goes back to eat the Truma. That's only somebody that could become an Almana and could become a divorcee. However, this woman 
who had relations with a non-Jew, she doesn't become an almana from that non-Jew. She doesn't become a divorcee from him. So memela, this halacha doesn't apply to her. So Nachamo, how do you know that a guy that has relations with a kehanas, Levia, Israelis, she makes her puzzle from here. Because a woman goes back to her original being when she could become an almana after this relation, when she become a divorcee after this relation. But from a guy, you don't become an almana. You don't become a divorcee, male, she doesn't go back to the original status. Why are you relying on Reb Dimi to say that Reb is the one that said that a child from a relationship with a non-Jew is a mamzer? I have somebody else that says the opposite. His name is Ravan. Who's Rebbe Yehuda Hanasi? That's Rebbe. The child is not a mamzer. Uman Rebbe Yehuda Hanasi? Rebbe. Obviously, we know throughout Chaz, Rebbe Yudha Nasi is Rebbe. Who's the one that's similar to Rebbe Yudha Nasi? But it's not Rebbe Yudha Nasi. Rebbe Yudha Nasi. That's Rebbe's grandson. Vav Rav Moira Ba'atero. And Rav, which we mentioned before, right? When we said, oh, Rebbe Yudha says that the, the kid is a mamzer. And we said, well, Rav and Shmuel say, he's not a mamzer. Here. Vav Rav Moira Ba'atero. The child of a relationship with a non-Jew is not a mamzer. Dahuda also the the Rav. Rabbi Yisai, listen to this story. Great story. A guy comes to Rav. Could you please tell me what's the halacha of a child that was born from, let's say, a rapist, a guy that violated a, a, a Jew and they had a, they had a child. Is the child a mamzer or not? Don't worry about it. Kosher. Guess what? I'm that child. My mother had a relationship with a guy. I'm the child. If you're so sure that the child is kosher, prove it. Give me a daughter. I want to marry a daughter. Huh. So he didn't say, He says, Rav, get out of my face. You're not marrying my daughter. I wonder why. Omar Shimi Barchil Rav. Amri Inchi, Gam le Bemodai, Akabarokta. Oh, oh, here comes the picture of Isai. There's a saying in Modai that if you want, people say, that's not a saying in Modai, people say, it's very easy to say stories about what happened in another country when you don't know what's flying. Yeah, in Modai, you know, in Modai, a camel can dance in a pail, in a small little bowl the size of a calf. In other words, he's saying, look, you said a halacha. Great, but you don't, you're not sticking to your halacha. You said that a kid produced from a relationship between a guy and a Jewish woman is not a mom's here. So prove it to me. So Rabbi Isai, I contacted Yoshi, our artist, the guy that did this stuff. This guy. And I said, I need a, a picture of a camel dancing in a pail for this Gemara. No problem. Hour and a half later, this is what he sent me. I think it's great. Here we go. Here's a camel in a pail. Look at the detail. Burka lady is riding the camel. You see her pink, her pink, uh, what are those? Crocs. Uh, Crocs. He has an MDY tie, he has tchelis in his tzitzis, he has a red yarmulke. It's a murder to get picture. He's mamish dancing. Now, the only problem with this picture is that really he should have all four feet in the pail. But just to lahamchish, because that's the saying, the saying is that all four feet are in the pail. But to show that he's dancing and he's having a great time, here he is. I think this is a gewaldi picture. We'll leave it up there on the screen so the other can have an awe. I couldn't come up. With this, even if I Googled and I cartooned it and this and that, I would never be able to come up with something like this. The, from all of the women, the Burka lady riding the camel. I love it. Okay. Hokab of Ogamla. Here. I'm the camel. You smeda halacha. Let's go. Valmadai. Veloy rogdo. It's not true. Camels do not dance in a bucket. 
you are not allowing me to marry a daughter. If I'm so kosher, let me marry a daughter. So Rav tells him, Even if you were as great as Yeshua Benun, you're not marrying my daughter. Meaning, I don't want to marry, I don't want, I don't want a, a son-in-law for my daughter whose lineage is questionable. Father's a guy. I want pure lineage. I don't care how great you are. Which is, needs understanding because look, Yeshua Benun, how can you get a better son-in-law than Yeshua Benun? But he's telling this guy, listen, get out of here. Yeah. You're not gonna. You're not gonna marry my daughter. I, there's a lot of people before you in line. If I was as great as Yeshua Benun, and, and you didn't want me to marry your daughter, I was such a great guy. I'm a Yeshua Benun. I'd find the shidduch everywhere. Hi, but today, you have to give me your daughter. You know why? Because if you don't give me your daughter, they'll say Rava didn't let me marry his daughter. Why? Because I'm my father is a non-Jew, so nobody's gonna marry me. The guy was a stubborn mule. He wouldn't leave. He's like, Rav, until you let me marry your daughter, I'm not leaving. So says the Gemara, a very sad thing. Yoav Be'ene took a look at him, Mushachim, and the guy died. Now, there's the famous story. I said it a bunch of times. We'll say it anyways. It was a... I'll just ruin it now. There was a Rebbe that used to tell one of his Hasidim, ah, you're such a tzaddik, you're such a tzaddik, tzaddik, great guy, tzaddik. So one day the guy turns to the Rebbe and says, Rebbe, I'm such a tzaddik. No? So how about my daughter, the daughter of a tzaddik, marries your daughter, the, the daughter of the Rebbe? So I said, look, there's different tzaddikim. There's different levels of tzaddikim. I meant you're a tzaddik, but don't push it. You're a different type of tzaddik. And we also, yeah, you're kosher. Doesn't mean you can marry my daughter. But the Ben Yada says, he's a Svarity Ben Yada. He says, why did this guy deserve to die? Oh, well, he wanted a Shidduch. Why, why did Rav look at him and kill him? For that, you deserve to die. So the Ben Yada says that what he was doing is, there was a machlaikis for generations. Is the child of of this violation between uh, you know, a captive and a, and, a, and, a, and a Jewish woman, is the child a mamzer, not a mamzer? Some say yes, some say not. Yeah, Rabbi Yechon says he's a mamzer. Rebbe, the author of the mission, is mamzer. Comes Rav and says, I'm telling you, Rabbi Yisai, not a mamzer. Comes this clown or whatever he is, and he, he says, I'm not leaving. So he's going to be Moitzi Shemra on Rav Psaq. People are going to start hesitating and saying maybe Rav wasn't serious about his psaq. And that, I, I just want to add to the Ben Yoyada, that kind of explains what this guy's chutzpah was. You paskin that I'm kosher. That means you take the leap and that's why you're going to marry the gadol, Adar's daughter? Why does he what does have the chutzpah even to, to demand it? But the chayr's chutzpah was because of what the Ben Yoyada was saying. Saying, listen, you just paskin, you need to show the world that your psaq is, is real. It's solid. That's the chutzpah. He's not stop coming, hey, I'm Joe Shmo, I'm a, I'm a Aretz, and I want to marry a daughter. No, he's saying, you want to show the world that your psaq is serious and that you argue with Rebbe and you argue with Rebbe Yochanan and you, you, you think that you and Shmuel are right? So you need to show that you're right by showing, by marrying me. And, 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 and therefore, by him insisting and not leaving, it caused a problem to the halacha. You've got to get out of here. So that's that. Not you. But you. It's a good thing that you came. You could stay here. There was uh, just a story that a very, very famous story, and I've said this a number of times, but I forgot who it is. Uh, they'll tell me right away the Maram Shif or one of these Gdailim was in the middle of learning Tyra, very, very concentrating in his learning, concentrating in his learning. And somebody came by and paid him back a loan. He gave him thousand dollars. So he took the thousand dollars, he opened up his Gemara. So thank you. He put it in the Gemara, closed the thing. Later on, he looked in his, in his uh, ledger, you know, a couple months later, he says, this guy owes me money, $1,000. He goes to the guy, he says, you owe me $1,000. The guy says, I paid you. Well, you didn't. It says in my thing, you didn't pay me. And this is a gadol, a gadol. Fight back and forth, and everybody started yelling at this guy. Chutzpah, I think it was the, something like the Maram Shef, famous, famous story. The bottom line is, they went to Besdin, 
a bezin said he's chayim, a whole thing. And then one day he was learning in his Gemara and he opens up and he cannot believe his eyes. Here's a thousand dollars. And he remembered that he was in the middle of learning. He put the thousand dollars in. He caused this guy the greatest embarrassment. The whole city hates this guy. They're saying he's fighting with the Gala Adar. So he goes to the guy and he says, I have to ask you, Mechila, you were right. You pay me back. So the guy says, I'm not Mechila. Look at the damage you did to me. But if your daughter marries my son, then everybody would believe that you, you made a mistake, and that I was right. And that's what he had to do. He had to make that shidduch. So sometimes it works. That kind of forcing of a shidduch. Says the Gemara. The Afra of Masna Moribaletera, and now the Gemara brings more. Rav Masna says that this child, so my friend, I'm not going to get into details, here in Chicago, famous guy here in Chicago, he's not a mamzer. Vaf Rav Yehuda Moir Balatero. And Rav Yehuda also says this woman, the, the child is, is, not, is not a mamzer, kosher kid. The Chiyasa the Kamehameha Rav Yehuda Amalei. Listen to this. What would you prove from this Maisa? The Chiyasa the Kamehameha Rav Yehuda, when they came to Rav Yehuda Amalei, Zil Itamar Oynosev Basminach. Go hide. In other words, go to another city. Nobody knows who you are. I'm giving you advice. Nobody knows that your father, who, you know, he's, a, he's not even Jewish. So go over there and get married. You're allowed to get married. In other words, it's mutter. You're not a mamzer. If he was a mamzer, you can't give a guy advice to go to another city as a mamzer and hide. But I'm telling you, you're a mutter to get married. Or marry another a girl that her father's also the same myself. In other words, a god. Go into Galus. 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 Go into another country. My Chavrusa, who is Medayik over here, very interesting. I'm just throwing it out there. By Rav it says, Oy Galay. Go, go to another country. By Rav Yehuda it doesn't say that. It says, Zil Itamar. Go hide. Go into another city. So he said maybe the pshat is because in Ksubis, Rav Yehuda holds, and this is a very, when we learned it, and we, we mentioned it a number of times, people go, what? Rav Yehuda holds, it's Osir to move from Bavel to Eretz Yisrael. He cannot make Aliyah until Mashiach comes. That's what he holds. So Mela, he couldn't tell him to go to another country. It's Osir. So he said, go to another city. All right. But here's a very big shaila. This is what you need to think about. And it bothered me a lot. And I looked around. How in the world can a Gadol Adar Rava tell a student or a guy in the community, go pretend, go to another city, go to another country, and pretend you're, you're, you're somebody else? Isn't that Gnevis Das? How could you fool people? Person has a disease. He's going to go to another place and not tell anybody that he's on this and that, this medication, that medication. He, he had yinamachla, whatever. Don't you have to be honest with your shidduch and tell them who you are? So Rabbi Yitzhak Zilberstein says, from here you see that you don't have to tell people that you're a guy, uh, that, you, that your father's a guy. What's a perfect example? A person that's uh, adopted. Father's a guy. You don't have to say anything. Go well, shidduch. I grew up. I went to Bis Yaakov. I went to... Regular yeshivas, you don't need to know this. It's not, not for you. Reb Eliyashiv holds that you do. Uh, it's something that you must disclose. What about this Gemara? So he says, this Gemara, if somebody's so stupid not to ask him, what's your lineage? Who are you? You're here by the Vart. I don't see a father. I don't see a mother. Remember the story that just happened now? It, it just happened a few months ago, maybe last year. Uh, I just remembered. This guy was an Arab. Palestinian married this Sephardi girl. And they didn't ask any questions. Where were your parents? Oh, they were killed in an accident. Where are this or that? Right? Just now in Bar, where did the guy live? In Bar Park or something? Brooklyn. So Rabbi Yashua, how do you how do you not find out who this guy is? He's a Palestinian, for goodness sake. Okay. Then the, then the onus is on you. Then your, that's your problem that you didn't figure that out. Zog the Gemara. What a crazy story. I'm thinking about it. Unbelievable. Like from the movies. How does, it, how does it do Kiddush? How does it do this? Kiddush Levana. Like, how does it, he knows about Kaparas? Like, how does he fall in and do all these? It's unbelievable. Okay. The 
They ask the question to the rabbi. Listen to this question. Right? The famous case of somebody that's half a slave, half free. Meaning he had two partners bought a slave, and one of the two partners freed him completely. So he's 50% freed. He's 50% 100% Jew, and 50% 100% the slave. He's 50-50. He's a half Jew, half slave. What's the Allah? If he has relations with a regular Jewish woman, what's the story with the child? If he's 100% the slave, so think about this logically. I think there's a great chap. Is there a difference between a full slave, 100%, having relations with a Jew? To that you said, Rav Paskin's kosher. So if he's only a half a slave, 100% it should be okay. If a whole slave, the kid is good. So 50% of a slave, the kid should also be good. Maybe there's enough Kimino. Maybe there's a way to say no. 50% is worse. As the Gemara says, Omar of Yosef, the author of this saying, we just turn, oh no, I have to go to the thing. Sponsored by Moishi. Let's see if I have it here. Sponsor of Moishi Horn, in honor of Jolly Joe Kraus and family, and sponsored not only as a schos for Moishi Yaakov Ben Shoshana and both Ruchnis and Gashmis, says the Gemara. Again, who is the author of this? Manu Ravi Huda. Vomar Ravi Huda, Misha Chetzi Avid Chetzi Ben Chayrin, Haba Bas Yisrael, Oisli Vlad, Inli Takana. Listen to this. A hundred percent slave that has relations with a Jewish woman, the kid is okay. But a fifty percent slave, and the fifty percent, the other fifty percent is Jewish, that child is a mamzer. Ki itmar dravyudo. Why? Ki going to Kiddush Bas Yisrael, he performed Kiddushin on a Jewish woman. The nimtzat avdeshu boy mishtamish beishis ish. Because this woman is married to a fifty percent Jew. And the 50% slave is using the Eishas Ish. He's being over on Eishas Ish. And that's why the kid is a mamza. Unbelievable. A 100% slave, no. But a 50% slave is worse. Not true. The one who says that a slave passes is passing even if she's 100% unmarried. And if you say that the Vlad is kosher, it's kosher, machsher, afilu beishasish, then the child is kosher even with a relationship with a married woman. So check out this chart right over here. We have two psukim here. Lo yikachish es eishas avim. You're not allowed to marry your father's wife, okay? Your stepmother. And then it says two psukim later, lo yavi mamzer bekalashem. So because of the smichos, because they are close in proximity, these two halachas, Eishasav and Mamzer, so we learn one from another. Man the puzzle solver, my Eishasav, the only times of Kedushin, have lad Mamzer. Just like Eishasav, where there's no Kedushin, we know that the kid is a Mamzer. How do we know the kid is a Mamzer? Because Pastor Gimel says it's a Mamzer. I've called the only times of Kedushin, have lad Mamzer. So anytime you have a situation, you cannot marry your father's wife, and if he try to perform Kedushin on her after your father dies, it doesn't go. So to any case where you try to perform Kiddushin and it doesn't work, the child is a mamzer. Therefore, with the slave, the Kiddushin doesn't chap, doesn't catch on, so the kid is a mamzer. Well, I can't marry her because she's my father's wife. But the, the entire world could marry her. But a slave and a non-Jew, they can never have Kiddush with any in. So therefore, this child is kosher. doesn't fit into this puzzle. So then what is Rabbi Yudha saying? He had relations with the Eishas This slave, this half-slave, had relations with the Eishas 
Not, not kid. He had, she was already married to somebody else. And this half slave had relations with her. So his 50% that's free, his 50% Jewish part is having relations with the Ish. Ish. If he's 100% Jewish, you ask him that the kid is a mamza, right? A Jew with a, with a married woman, child of mamza. So a 50% Jew, because he's a 50% Jew, 50% slave, the 50% takes over and creates a mamza. That's why it's a mamza. Because he had relations with the Ish. 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 Before we wanted to say that he got engaged, he married her, and he made her into Ish. No, we're saying that he, he, she was married to somebody else, not this slave guy. He had relations with Ish. 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 Om Ravina, Om Ali, Rav Gazo. Interesting name. Ravina said, I heard in the name of Rav Gazo. Ikla Rav Yosi bar Oven la Asrin. Rav Yosi was here in this place. Vavavuv da Bepnuya. There was a story, a Maisa Shahaya, with an unmarried woman that had relations with a slave. Vachshu. And he said, it's kosher. Beishishish. The same story happened with a married woman. Upasil. Om Rav Sheishish, Lidi Om Ali, Rav Gazo. Loi Rav Yosi bar Oven Hava. Yeah, the famous story. The guy comes to Shul. Did you hear? Ruvain made a million dollars. You heard about it? He made a million dollars. So the guy said, no, no, no. First of all, it wasn't Ruvain. It was Shimon. Second of all, it wasn't a million dollars. It was two million dollars. Third of all, he didn't make it. He lost it. That's what's going on over here. So, uh, by the way, you got the names wrong. Okay, that's problem number one. And that you said that she's puzzled with Eishasish? No. You got everything wrong. The name wrong, the halacha wrong. Okay. Amemar said, both are kosher. Not like you said before. Everything is kosher. A guy that has relations with a, with a yid, doesn't matter if she's a married woman, doesn't matter if she's not married, the kid is kosher. What are we passing? Kosher. And that's the answer to my friend here in Chicago. That the Vlad is kosher. The Shaila, I think, discussing whether how kosher is. Is it kosher, kosher to the point where nothing and he can marry a kayan and everything? Or maybe they didn't mean kayan? Okay, that's a, the bottom line is he, he's not a mamzer. Certainly not a mamzer. Says the Gemara, Rava Akshari le Rav Mori Barachal. This is the most famous case in Shas when it comes, mentioned many, many times in Shas that. Shmuel's daughter was captured by the non-Jews, obviously. And one of them had relations with her. His name was Isuro. And out came this Rav Mari. So think about it. Shmuel, the famous Amoira Shmuel, we just mentioned him before, Rav and Shmuel. Shmuel, Shmuel has a grandson, Loyalenu, that Terrible story, his daughter went missing, she's kidnapped, captured, violated, they give birth. But what happened was that Isura became a ger, and he married this woman at the... But we don't want to ever mention in Shas, we never mention, Rashi always tells us the story, we don't want to mention the father's name, it's not covered from a mari, a mari was a chash of a person, there's many stories about him in Shas and different things, alachas. So we always say, we always call him by his mother's name. You'll... Hardly, I don't know if you ever find that in Shas. An Amaira named after his mother. And that's the reason why. But that's our story here. The father is the, the father, well, the mother was a Jew, but you have a non Jew who impregnated her. But Rava went ahead and said, told everybody he's kosher, everybody can marry. Not only that, they made him an officer. So I saw what Moshe Feinstein brings is a Magachir. Yeah? Is the Fiyomi Magachir allowed to be appointed if his father is a non Jew? Because of the whole thing, you bring different Rayas. You see Shmaya and Aftalian, they weren't Jewish, and they're the famous 
And then he says, well, maybe Shmai and Aftalian, who were hills, Rebbeim, maybe they, it was a special thing. They were the greatest of the great. You see, Dvora was Dvora and Avia. It's a one-time thing. She was the greatest, so she was the Navia. But typically, you don't make a woman a Navia or, or in charge. And then he says, but you should know that uh, Adafiyami Magichir doesn't have control. He doesn't, he can't enforce anything. We're talking about being in control of other Jews. That's what the Gemara is saying. And just being a Rebbe is not, not any good. the whole Arichas. But okay, on this sugya. Mind you, the bubble. Uh-oh. Something happened to the Zoom. Hopefully we make it through the end. It's only two, three more minutes. Rova, Achshari, Levermori, Barachel. So Rava said, this guy is great. Uman Yibbe Purs the bubble. He made him an officer. So just like a million of dollars to be a president of the United States, you have to do like different things. You have to be born in the United States. To be a king in Klai Yisrael, you have to be born to Jewish parents. You can't be a ger. So why did he make him an officer? Hi, Kivin the Imam Israel, but since his mother is Jewish, he is considered brethren, your brother. Avdi the Rebchia Bar Ami says the Gemara, the, 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 the slave of Rebchia, he wanted to marry this Goya, and she wanted to become Jewish. So he put her, oh no. Reconnecting. How are we on Zoom? Okay, let's keep on going. Let's run. Um, so he put her in the mikvah. Uh, he put her in the mikvah. She should be his wife. I can make her kosher, her, her daughter, everything good. Why? I'll make her kosher. Because the Ravasi don't Ravasi miloy tovlin idusa. So she was Taival. He didn't want to be married to Anida, be with Anida. So he put her in the mikvah. So that tefillah for her Nidus should be just good enough for a tefillah of a ger. A ger has to go in the mikvah to become Jewish. So that, let's use that Nidus. Now we have to see Taisus for a second, like three lines down. Taisus has a bomb question. How can this person put this woman he wants to marry in the mikvah. And was saying, okay, you put her in the mikvah for Nida, but it works also for Geros. You don't have to have intent. She went in for the Geros. But at the end of the day, you need Dayanim. Says, this is a big chiddush. And this is how we have to explain the sugya. The three Dayanim are for her to accept mitzvahs. To go into the mikvah, she goes in the mikvah. Maybe a woman can watch. It doesn't, you don't need three Dayanim for the mikvah. So she accepted upon herself mitzvahs from the Dayanim, then later on he put her in the mikvah by himself without Dayana. That's fine. So it's a big chiddush. We just have to know that chiddush. Says the Gemara. Okay, so that's why she's kosher. Bibrarta, what about her daughter? I could also make her daughter kosher. We're talking about a slave. His slave wanted to marry this Goya who became Jewish. The Vlad is kosher. Says Gemara, I would have a Karli Barami also. They used to make fun of this person. They gave him a nickname. You're the son of a guy. Goya. Omar Avasi, Miloy Tavlin, and Dusa. But wait a minute. Why could you consider you a guy? She wanted to become Jewish. And she was Taival for Nidos. So she should be good. that, that feel should be good enough for Gerus. I would have a Karli Bararma. Over here, they called him, oh, your father's a guy. Why the father must most likely in those days because of Takonis Ezra, you can't learn Torah without going to the mikvah if you have a carry. So he most likely he wanted to be Jewish, so he went to the mikvah. So he went to the mikvah. Oh, that's good enough for, for Geras. Fine, we'll stop right over here, Rabbi Isai. We'll reconvene tomorrow at 4 o'clock Chicago time. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much for coming for two shiurims. Unbelievable. Very much appreciated.